welcome back to a new video here in Suave. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I did these sort of like simple VFX fire effect. And it's actually pretty simple. It only takes a little bit of time and also just adjusting a few tracking settings. And then what really sells the effect uh, are the sound effects. I'm gonna talk about that later. This is from the actual pan video in which these was featured, which is the 500 free sound effects. If you haven't checked that video out yet, make sure to do so because I think you might find it helpful. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing that you wanna do is, you're gonna have your first clip, which is the one of you simulating, sat lighting something on fire or any type of clip that you wanna put fire onto, right? Doesn't have to be exactly like this one. And you'll see here the movement it does and then the fire goes out. And actually, this video is empty. I'll show you why. Here is the render version because the adjustment layer while I'm recording and it also wants to pre render, it won't work out. So, this is how it looks like. And you'll see here the flame, the sort of like light effect that supposedly comes from the flames. And that is because that is why you need two different layers. This is going to be the adjustment layer. And once it's active, you will see the flame there. Okay, let me just get rid of that for now. I'm gonna press D to deactivate that. And here we have the basically the main clip and in which we're gonna adjust the colors later on. The first thing you wanna do is you're gonna create an adjustment clip. And there's one issue that still happens when you create an adjustment clip is that if you bring this here and you cut it, when you wanna go into fusion, it will show all these numbers right here like that. And it's really hard to work when you're gonna do that if you have that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this adjustment clip and then we bring it here. And then here you can actually rename these and then you can bring these back on. And if we get rid of that, we can go into fusion and then we will see the actual keyframes by number from zero and on. So let's ignore that one. That was just for the beginning so that you have to do that because that makes your work easier in the long run. Okay, now we're gonna go to the actual adjustment clip that I used. And I'm gonna show you the process that I did for these. When you open the first adjustment clip, you're gonna see these here like that, which is, this is the adjustment clip and this is the media out, which is basically like an invisible layer. Now, the first thing that you wanna do is add a tracker for these. And if I press two right here, we're gonna see that first clip that we have here. And we're gonna press control space bar to open the selection tools pop up and we're gonna add a tracker here. Now on this tracker, you can change the operation mode to match move, or you can just wait until you have the tracking points ready, but so that doesn't matter as much, okay? Now that we have our adjustment layer, we're gonna find the point where we wanna start tracking. Now, when you wanna position your tracker in the point, if you see this here, it's because the playback, the playback is at half resolution. If I turn this off, now you will be able to see the whole screen. You see how it doesn't get cut anymore. And then you can simply click track forward and that's gonna do the tracking. And the issue with this specific clip is that it was a little bit blurry. Let me just cancel it because I don't wanna go through that whole process. The issue with this clip is that it was a little bit blurry in some sections. So that makes the tracking actually kind of difficult. So what you wanna do is make, the, make sure the tracker follows the whole thing and it has a specific path. And it doesn't matter if it's not tracking correctly right now, because then if I stop it here, we can go back and switch it or change the position of this tracker so that it goes with the actual position. If your clip is not as blurry, this process is gonna be really easy. Uh, that's just the case for this specific clip because it was a little bit blurry and there was a little bit of movement that made the tracking harder So I had to adjust it manually one by one by moving these points or by simply Going and selecting these and moving it around and it automatically edits the keyframe that the tracker produced Okay, let's go back to the second portion now on the actual after you have the main tracker This is gonna be the main tracker that we have you're gonna add your first clip Which is gonna be the fired clip if you add it like that, which is like a, it was just a candle glow that I had, you'll see that it's a little bit crazy and all over the place because it's following the tracker because we have the operation mode and match move. Now, one thing you also want to make sure is to change the apply mode to screen because otherwise, otherwise, if you put it in normal, it would just be, it would just show the actual exact 
fire clip and it will not blend as well as if it is on screen mode now the next thing that you would want to do is we had a transform node here so that i could adjust the actual size of our candle here and you'll see that the angle was rotated a little bit too and that was because of the movement that i did with the fire so that it sort of moves a little bit like as if my movement of the hands made the flame move with the wind i guess from the movement and now the next thing is um i have these glow effect that i added to it so that it sells the effect a little bit better and now it looks like a little bit weird because of this square right here right now that's the reason why i have this merge node here and then i have this polygon here there it goes so make sure that you have a merge node if you have to do these uh there's a background that's invisible here but that's just so that we can use that fire as the foreground in this case too and then we're gonna add this polygon here to surround the flame and it will sort of follow that flame all around it. the reason for this is that we don't want that weird edge or like square shape that shows up because it doesn't look realistic at all right if that doesn't happen on your footage then you don't have to go through this step but in this case it did happen and you will see how the flame is sort of following this position here and that is because i adjusted each of these points of the tracker manually now the last thing that i did for this specific fire was i added the waviness effect and that was just to make it move a little bit and look like a flame that's actually more real because flames don't always just stay there because they're always reacting to a little bit of wind so they move around a little bit right let me go back to playback and change it to have resolution in this case so that we can pre-render this faster so you will see how the flame moves a little bit and for that i actually use the vertical and then i just play it around with the settings here you can play around and do it as much as you want you can add a lot of movement or as little as you want and make sure that there's the animate selected because otherwise it's just going to be a still wave shape and you're not going to see it moving constantly. So now for the second flame, what I did I is that I copied this exact same tracker and I pasted it next to it, but then I did a little bit of a few adjustments to it. The reason for this is that I wanted it to be a little bit um, offset with the main one. I wanted to be sort of like looking, this first fire is sort of like coming from behind the finger. And then this one is sort of like engulfing the finger, I guess you could say. Now this specific clip is sort of like a fireball also again, that's something on fire. And I use a polygon mask for these two. And I actually added soft edge to it because otherwise it was really hard to make it work well in this case. Now that sells the effect a little bit better because of the soft edge. And then I added the transform node to make it really small. And then we have the tracker here so that it follows the finger around. That basically you repeat the same process by and also just offset the little tracker a little bit so that the positions are a little bit different. Now in this case, also you wanna make sure that the apply mode is on screen. And if we look at these from the beginning, you will see that you can see the flames here coming from all the way at the bottom before I switch it on, I guess. And that's the reason why I have this mask rectangle here that is connected to these two trackers that we have here. So that when the flick, the, before the flick, I guess, of the finger happens, we cannot see those flames. And then this mask is animating into the screen, just by simple position animation and then it makes the fire appear. The same thing as when the fire blows out and my hand goes out of the screen, this one's, this mask is was going out. We don't have to animate the actual fire elements anymore because that would be just too hard and too many keyframes. So the easiest way was to animate the mask here. So it gets off the screen and as the movement happens and then it disappears and it makes it a little bit more natural. Now, the last one was a little bit just like a later effect that I thought of. It was to, just to make it a little bit more realistic was to add sort of like a smoke, a little smoke that shows up here. You can see it's really barely noticeable, but I think it's it plays uh, it plays along with the effect or with the intention of the effect to make it a little bit more realistic in the sense that in the sense that when you blow up a candle or like a fire, 
it doesn't just disappear but it leaves a little bit of smoke trail i guess from it so that's why i added these in this case for these i added just a simple smoke from a stock footage that i found this is actually like an instance stick and that was the only one that i found that i was that was sort of following these uh, shape that i wanted to to follow sort of like a rollout when the movement happens and then i added this polygon mask to it now you will see that this is not showing up here and the reason for this is that the clip was actually shorter so in this case i wanted to start showing up when the fire was about to be blown out or like or disappear and in that case what i did was i had to change the global in and out and for that you just simply click the number here and that will make the clip to show up from this keyframe and on it would not show up show up until this keyframe hits and that makes it easier so you don't have to adjust the blending modes and all that stuff later on too in this case i actually did adjust the blending modes because that makes it uh show up a little bit better in that case too now i also added a transform node to it just to add a little bit of movement to the smoke like this really small detail movement and then the last thing that you will see is how it sort of like let me let me do these for a second i'm gonna copy this background which is invisible i'm gonna get rid of that and there so we only see the smoke in action you see smoke is barely there for less than a second maybe one second like a one and a half seconds and you'll see that i animated the blending mode here so that it shows up and then disappears at the same time and then I also have the apply mode as screen like in all the other ones because that's one of the main ways that you can make it overlay with your main footage. And that is pretty much it, how you would add the fire effect. After that, you would just go and have your media out. And if we look at all of these completely like that, it looks like these. And ignore the glow because that's the next step that we're going to cover, which is done in the color page and on the main clip. This is the adjustment clip just taking it from the main clip that we have under it in the edit page. Uh, and you will notice that I barely added any keyframes. There was only a few keyframes here on the rectangle. And then the actual, of course, the tracker has its own keyframes. And then also the blending mode here so that the smoke shows up a little bit and then disappears really fast. Now, anything else does it didn't really have a key from oh for the glowing effect i actually just played around a little bit with the details here and you'll notice that i only added the glow effect to the fire to the first fire if you added to the second one it was going to be a little bit too bright so that's why i left it here on the, only on the first one and you can see these settings here this is what i had for that you can play around and see if there's something that looks even better then you can use that too Okay, so let's go back to the edit page because we are pretty much done here in Fusion doing all those steps. We will go to the color page. Now here, ignore all of these. Now here we have that main clip and this is the adjustment clip. The reason why it's still active is so that we can see where the flame is. And we see our flame here and by default, if we look at it, where well, you don't have this effect done yet, it's going to look like this. The first thing that I added here was a new node and for that you simply right click and then add node and a new corrector like that. We're just going to show you on this one that I already have. And on this one what I did was I added an ellipse or like a circle mask and then I put, put it right where I want the glow to be. You can actually use the tracker for these if you want to track the position of these different elements like that. Or you can manually track it if you want to. In order for you to use the tracker, it's really easy. Once you position it in the place, you simply click this element and it will start tracking forward. Uh, and then if it's there's a little bit of an issue, you simply do it the same way that we did it in Fusion. You can adjust the actual tracking point by adjusting the position and it will replace the keyframe right here. In this case, I think I did it manually and I just put it around the flame because it's only for like a second. So it's only like 24 frames. And then the next thing that I did was I played around with the softness in order to animate it. Now that you have your ellipse or circle tracked, what you want to do is actually add a little bit of a color or a red hue to it. And for that, we can actually just go around here in this primaries page. You will add a little bit of like gain towards the red side 
or like orange yellowish and also the gamma for it that is how i sort of like try to mimic what the glow of this flame will look like and then after that what i did was i play around with the softness animating it because if you so increase it it will be bigger if you decrease it it will get really closer to the actual flame so in order to create that glaring animation was i just simply edited the softness and once the color corrector keyframe is active if you if it's in red it will automatically keyframe any changes that you do if i move these like that it will save this and it will create a new keyframe on that setting and you'll notice that the the and you'll notice that the values here are really small when it's in regards to the softness changing you can use the opacity or the softness to add the glaring effect that it looks a little bit and then at the end you will simply just get rid of them completely when the flame disappears that is in basic effect so in order to do that simply go here and make sure that this is in red and then you can adjust these little points by default it's gonna be like blank right so what you will have to do is you just simply move this like that make it smaller like that and actually before anything happens and then like that but when i deleted that since we cannot see each individual thing unfortunately when i deleted all those as an example the actual tracker went away with that too so in that case i'm just gonna Control Z back to it so that we can still see it. So that is pretty much it in this sense to add the clear. Hopefully I was clear enough in this uh, specific case. Now the last step for it was the sound effect. So in this case, what I'm gonna do for this is I'm gonna go back to the main clip where I created this and I'm gonna find the sound effects that I use for these. Now that I bring that the actual render version and now you'll see here in this case, I actually layered only four different sound effects. Let me zoom in a little bit so maybe we can see the name and all these sound effects that I used for these were actually from the pack that's done by Black Magic Design that was done or created by Black Magic Design and which if you want to check that out make sure to check that video out i'm going to link it in the description also for that or somewhere up here and let's so let's hear this out there it goes so the first thing that i did was uh an actual lighter sound or like a lighter flick here and then i actually adjusted the volume and the scent i'm never sure what the scent do but sometimes it sounds like crap and sometimes it actually makes it sound a little bit better or closer to what I wanted to do. And these were simple. I didn't adjust the EQ or anything in these basically, only in this one, which is the Bush's rustling walkthrough, which I wanted to make it sound like the actual flame because when it's burning, because when it's burning, sometimes it sounds like something like crackling, I guess, a little bit. I wanted to sell that effect a little bit better in that case. And then this case was another lighter flick. Uh, which I mix or layer both of those so that they sound a little bit better combined. And then the last one, when the fire actually blows out, I use the sound of a person blowing. And I actually didn't lower the volume on these, but only the sense. And yeah, that is what sort of seems like I don't actually blow up on the flame here, but I feel that it sells the effect a little bit better in that case too. And for the sound effects, that's pretty much it. It's sound effects like these, it's all about experimenting and layering sounds so that once you find something that you like and that you're happy with, you can just leave it like that. It's all about experimenting. There's no really like set rules that you have to follow in this case for that last part. And that is pretty much how it did the fire or flame effect. I guess you could call it a simple VFX, a simple VFX video and yeah hopefully this video is easy to understand and that it gives you some ideas yeah without further ado i just want to say thanks for watching and i hope to see you in the next video here in suave bye